Okay, we pick up our study in the second epistle of John, as we looked at last week, the writing, or when it was written, approximately 80 to 85 AD. The writer, again, is supposed to be St. John the Apostle. We looked at the external evidence. We looked at the internal evidence. Uh, today we're going to pick up on John the Apostle himself. You say, well, we're doing the epistle of Second John. Why don't we just get into it? The method that I'm writing this, and I've done this study, is to break down a very basic milk foundation for those who are newborn babes in Christ who have probably not had a chance to study, who have not learned anything yet. And to remind those that are of full age or still growing to learn and to memorize and to rehash the basic principles, basic doctrines. Maybe you've never really even studied like we have. As now we're going to break down, we're going to break down who John the Apostle is. Maybe you never looked at John or studied his life. But we're going to look at the first place, Matthew 4, 31. But we're not going to run all these. But Matthew 4, 31. And that's 4, 21. Matthew 4, 21. And going on from thence... He saw other two brethren, James the son of Zebedee, and John his brother, in a ship with Zebedee their father, mending their nets, and he called them. So the first thing we see about John the Apostle is he's a son of Zebedee. His father is named Zebedee. That's Matthew 4.21 that we just read. We can see Matthew 10, 2. Matthew chapter 10, verse 2. And we see to hear the name of the apostles. Now the names of the twelve apostles are these. The first, Simon, who was called Peter. And Andrew, his brother. James, the son of Zebedee. And John, his brother. Now we can run them all, but we're not going to. Same thing would be found in Mark 1, 19, verse 20. Mark, uh, Mark 3, 17. Mark 10, 35. And Luke 5, 10. That's the son of Zebedee. Another thing we see about John the, the Apostle, we read again in Matthew 10, 2. Name of the twelve apostles are these. The first, Simon, whose name is Peter, Andrew, his brother, James, the son of Zebedee, and John, his brother. The second thing we learn about John the Apostle is James, who also is an apostle, they are brothers. James and John are brothers. Their father is Zebedee. We run that in reference back in Matthew 4.21, and these are pretty much the same ones that we've seen for the son of Zebedee. Matthew 10.2, Mark 1.19, Mark 3.17, Mark 10.35, and Luke 5.10. All show that James and John are brothers and that their father is Zebedee. Number three of John the Apostle is John's and James' brother, his brother, their mother frequent with Jesus and his mother. Matthew 20, 20. Matthew 20, 20. And there came to him his there came to him the mother of Zebedee's children, that's James and John, with her sons, James and John, worshiping him and desiring a certain thing of him. So, not only did J Jesus know James and John, but James also knew Zebedee, their father, and the Jesus knew their mother. And their mother knew Jesus. 
One more place we can see for that is Matthew 27, 56. Matthew 27, 56. The scriptures say, Among which was Mary Magdalene, Mary, the mother of James and Joseph, that's Mary, Jesus' mother. James and Joseph, that's Jesus' brothers. You do an interesting study when you do a study of Mary's in the Bible. And the mother of Zebedee's children. Well, we know who Zebedee is, and we know who his children are, James and John. So this woman, this wife of Zebedee, the mother of James and John, knew Jesus Christ and came to Jesus and knew Jesus' mother and knew Jesus' family. All right, number four, Luke 5.10. And we've already seen this in Matthew, but, but we're going to go scripture with scripture. You can look it up. You can read it. Make sure you know I'm not coming up with this stuff myself. But in Luke chapter 5, verse 10, And so was also James and John, the sons of Zebedee, which were partners with Simon. And Jesus said unto Simon, Fear not. From henceforth thou shalt catch men. And when they had brought their ship to land, they forsook all and followed him. Number one, two, three, four. Number four. They were fishermen, Zebedee, James, and John. And they were fishermen that knew and toiled with Peter and Andrew. Before the Lord called them. So Peter, James, and John, and Andrew knew each other. They worked with each other. And they knew the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, John is an apostle. He's a disciple. And he's an important one. John chapter 19, his gospel. John chapter 19, verse 26. When Jesus therefore saw his mother, now Jesus is at the cross. He's on the cross. Mary's there. Peter is gone. Judas has hung himself. There's only one out of twelve of the disciples that are there. And it says, When Jesus therefore saw his mother and the disciples standing by, whom he loved. So there is a disciple recorded in the scriptures. Now Jesus loved them all, but there is one disciple recorded that Jesus was fond of. Let's see who that is. 20 verse 2 John 20 verse 2 Then she runneth and cometh to Simon Peter and to the other disciple whom Jesus loved Okay we know by that one again Jesus loved all his disciples but there's one particular one that he loved and we know that one particular that he loved is not Peter because it says, then she runs and cometh to Simon Peter and to the other disciple whom Jesus loved. So there's an and. Two different people. Verse 21, I mean chapter 21, verse 7. Therefore that disciple whom Jesus loved saith unto Peter, so it's not Peter. Everybody wants 
There's a particular religion out there that wants to give the preeminence of Peter over everything, and that's not so. That's a false teaching. Twenty seven verse ten. Jesus says unto them, Bring of the fish which you have caught. And that's in the wrong one. Twenty seven ten. Twenty one ten. Jesus says unto them, Bring of the fish which you have now caught. Verse 24. This is the disciple which testified these things and wrote these things. We know that his testimony is true. And there are also many other things which Jesus did, the which, if they should be written every one, I suppose that even the world itself could not contain the books that should be written. Amen. I miss one there. Oh, verse 20. I had the wrong reference. I apologize. That's why that didn't look too good there. That's verse 20. And Peter turned about, verse 20 of chapter 21, And Peter turned about seeing the disciple whom Jesus loved following, which also leaned on his breast at supper, said, Lord, which is he that betrays thee? And he speaks in verse 24, and the writer is verse 24 and 25. It is John who wrote the Gospel of John. John is the beloved disciple that Jesus had more love for. It said that John laid at the breast of Jesus. John had his head, his ears, by the heart of God. Where that sinless blood pumped. Where that blood poured out upon the beatings, upon the cat of nine tails, upon the nails. John is a particular outstanding, if I can use that word, apostle. That Jesus Christ sought him, as we're going to see in a minute, in the inner circle. That Jesus Christ loved him more than the twelve. John is a writer of the Gospel of John. He is the writer of the book of Revelation. And we see that he's the writer of 1st, 2nd, and 3rd epistles of John. Now, approximately 90 A.D., and you can read this count in the Revelation, that he was banished to the island of Patmos, where he observed the Revelation. I believe we can find that real quick. Turn to the book of Revelation. And Revelation chapter 1 verse 9 states, I, John. This is the only writings where John puts his name in. We even saw that in, in the Gospel of John chapter 19 verse 24 and 25. He said this is the apostle that or disciple that he didn't state his name. He doesn't state his name in 1st, 2nd, 3rd John. But he does state his name here in Revelation chapter 1, verse 9. He says, I, John, who also am your brother and companion in tribulation, and in the kingdom and patience of Jesus Christ, was in the island of Patmos for the word of God and for the testimony of Jesus Christ. Again, he was put on the, on the banished to the island of Patmos, left to die. And he didn't die. But this is where he saw the revelation of Jesus Christ. Now it is recorded that he passes away, goes on to glory, between 98 to 100 A.D. According to Epaphides, E-P-I-P, 
H A N I E S, at 94 years old. And it's great to remark that he is the last of the apostles to die off outside of being uh, banished, being put into boiling oil, not suffering death from that. He is the only apostle that does not suffer a violent death. And I wonder if I have my book of, I don't have it here. If I had my Fox's Book of Martyrs out, I could read to you the Apostles. Well, I don't have that book right. But at the beginning of the Book of Fox's, Fox's Book of Martyrs, it will list the 12 Apostles and Barnabas and all of them and their death and where they died and approximately age and year. So John is recorded to die at 94 years old. One of the original disciples called Apostle. Back to Matthew chapter 10, verse 2. Matthew chapter 10, verse 2. Now these are the names of the apostles. Now the names of the twelve apostles are these. The first Simon, who is called Peter, Andrew his brother, James the son of Zebedee, and John his brother. So he's a disciple called the Apostle. You can find this also in Mark chapter 3, verse 17, and Luke 6, 14. Now, isn't this amazing? We are told in countless places, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven times, that John the Apostle is the son of Zebedee. We are told seven times that James, his brother, but yet we do not have the date of the birth of the Lord Jesus Christ. And only twice in the scriptures is his birth mentioned. Matthew and Luke. And we are told about his mother is in his company and is frequent with his own mother. But we're not told how many Magi came to visit him when he was a young child. There are things that God wants us to know, and there are things that God does not want us to know. And you'll never get the answers. And even when we go to glory, you still not guarantee you're going to get those answers. There are certain things that God has left out because had you the truth, like that Roman Catholic system that runs around, you would go over there and you would worship that thing or that person more than you would worship God. Had God not sent Michael down to grab the bones of Moses, you could go off and find those bones and make it a relic of your church. Imagine if the Pharisees would have able the body, or the bones at least, of Moses. I mean, they claimed to have Moses' seat. They claimed that, you know, to follow everything he did, which they didn't. There are th some things in the Bible that's recorded that God has more importance. We have more information about John the Apostle than we do Jesus in his early life, besides 12 years old or 13, I forget what's not, age. Jesus is setting down to the Holy Spirit, the Comforter, that, listen, this is the guy who's going to write five books of the Bible. This is the one whom Jesus loved. And you're going to see John in eternity. Yet, yeah, but how many times up to now have you really studied John? His character. He's called by Jesus. Matthew 4.21 
Matthew 4.21 And going on from thence, he saw other two brethren, James the son of Zebedee, and John his brother in a ship with Zebedee their father, mending their nets. And he, Jesus, called them. Isn't that a wonderful thing? That John the Apostle walked, talked, saw, heard, and smelled the five senses of man, the Lord Jesus Christ. And we can read this in Mark chapter 1, verse 29. And Luke 5.10, that he's called by Jesus. And in the book of Revelation, the angel is sent by God to give the revelation of Jesus Christ to John. Now he's one of the three select disciples. And you say, what does that mean? Matthew 17, 1, and we might check all these scriptures. I'm not in a rush. I want you to know who we're studying, what we're studying, the who, what, where, when, why, and how. In Matthew 17, verse 1, And after six days, Jesus taketh Peter, James, and John, his brother, being brother of James, Peter, James, and John, see the Lord Jesus Christ, Moses and Elijah on the Mount of Transfiguration, they see him as the purest white as white can be, a holy white. The other nine disciples were not called up here. In Matthew 5.37. No, nope, that's Matthew 5.37. That's not the right reference. I knew. There's another bad one there. I apologize. Mark chapter 9, verse 2. Mark 9, 2. And after six days, the same story, Jesus taketh with him Peter and James and John. Peter, James, and John. You say, well, my church pastor seems to have these few people. That they seem to get all the glory and all that. They seem to get all. It, it, Jesus had the same thing, too. And I'm not calling upon a click. These men were called Peter, James, and John for a reason. Peter, James, and John are writers of the books of the Bible. The nine disciples never write a book. But the nine, well actually you should say the eight because Judas never did. The eleven disciples see the resurrected Jesus Christ. But the three here, the writers, and I believe that this James, and this is a whole other story, but I believe this is a James that writes the book of James. And I know some people will disagree with that, but that's not part of this study. These three men had an extraordinary life 
with our Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. They were places with Jesus that others did not even go. And these are the three that we look to their books on our Messiah that today that we depend upon because we're living by faith. We have not seen Jesus Christ. We have not looked into his eyes. We have not seen his body. We have not physically heard his words. We've read them. We have not handled the Lord Jesus Christ as Peter, James, and John has. But all the tasting of the word that we get, That's Mark 9, 2, Mark 13, 3. Mark 13, 3. And as he sat upon the Mount of Olives over against the temple, Peter and James and John and Andrew asked him privately or privately. Privately or privately. They're going to ask him, say, Lord, what are the end times? What are the signs? And there is Peter, James, and John to hear from the mouth of God, who Jesus Christ is God. You believe anything else, you're the liar. For Jesus said, I and my Father are one. John 10.30. He told the Jews, I am. And they picked up stones to stone him. They knew exactly what he was saying. So get some Russell with potatoes and cook those rather than follow Mr. Russell. John, who is a writer of the book of Revelation, hears from the mouth of Jesus... Here's from the mouth of the angel sent by God, sent by Jesus, what's going to happen in the future. Peter writes things on prophecy. Part of that inner crowd. Mark 14.33 He's in the garden. Go into the garden. And he taketh with him Peter and James and John. Nine of those apostles or disciples never saw Jesus pray like he prayed to the Father. But yet... Peter, James, and John, when Jesus came back each and every time to three times, he finds his Peter, James, and John asleep. So Peter, James, and John are not this big hierarchy to build a church upon and, you know, false doctrines or anything like that. They are sinners just like you and I. They're men. And there's anything that they should have been that we would fall asleep to if we were there is they should have been right there by Jesus' side to record personally what he wrote. You know what they write, what he says, it's given by the Holy Spirit, it's given by Jesus Christ because he comes back and finds him, a fall, finds him asleep. I mean, people fall asleep in church all the time. Eutychus fell out of window sleep. They fell asleep on Jesus. 
What are you going to say? What are you going to do? And Luke 8, 5. Sometimes they fall asleep because the preacher's boring. I know Jesus wasn't boring. I've been in a few sermons where, you know, you take two sermons and you call me in the morning. I'll put you out. In Luke 8, 5, listen, every preacher, no matter who you like as a preacher, he has some boring sermons that will put you to sleep. Everyone. It says, Paul was, when Eutychus fell out of the window, it says, Paul was long-winded. Go check it out. And I am quoting from Luke 8, 5. Uh, this one's wrong too. That's right. Luke eight, Luke eight, five. That's a long one too. Apologize. Nine twenty-eight. It came to pass about eight days after these sayings, he took Peter and John and James. And sorry that I missed the quote because there's one, there's one of the passages where he calls Peter, James, and John only. There's a girl that has died. And everybody laughs at Jesus. And the only ones that get to go in that room with that girl that's dead is the mother and the father, Peter, James, and John. And do you know what the scoffers and the mockers of Jesus missed? They missed a little girl being resurrected. They never saw it. Do you know that the world is going to miss the rapture? They're not going to see the church being taken out. I don't care what these movies and all that you listen to. You know, it's quite possibility the world won't hear that trumpet. Maybe they will, maybe they won't. They may not even notice we're going. Heck, way Christians live today, they're not going to know. They don't leave a mark. So he is one of the three selected disciples. And we've already read that John was in the garden in Mark chapter 14. John was an eyewitness. Eyewitness and news on the spot. Today at 11 o'clock, you know, blah, 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 blah. John could stand in a courtroom and raise his hand on the Bible, the King James 6011, and say, so, you know, you decided to tell the whole truth, nothing but the truth, so help you, God, I do. And John could give a testimony of Jesus being in that garden in prayer. He can give a testimony of Judas giving our Savior a kiss and the men of the high priest carrying our Savior off. For that kangaroo court. The night court. That should never have happened. Peter, James, and John witnessed that event. Historical documentation. I read you something back here. I'm going to read it again. For the word says, at the mouth of two witnesses or three, how many did I mention? Count them. Peter, James, and John. 
Why were there three and not one? Because the scripture saith, Jesus did everything according to scripture. At the mouth of two witnesses or three, Deuteronomy 17.6, Deuteronomy 19.15, Matthew 18.16, 2 Chronicles 13.1, 1 Timothy 5.19, and Hebrews 10.18, all state that Jesus had to have three personal witnesses in his life. You know how many witnesses were to witness that Jesus died on the cross? One was an unrepented thief. Two was the repentant thief. And three was Jesus Christ. Who were the three that watched Jesus die on that cross? Rome, one. Israel, two. The thieves, three. You know our entire universe is built upon three? A red, yellow, green light. A father, a mother, and a child. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. There's life, there's death, there's resurrection. Every man is born, every man lives, and every man will die outside the rapture. Everything in God is done by threes. It's a solid, it's a liquid, or it's a gas. And that principle found in Deuteronomy that we read by the witness of three, that was according to scripture that he needed Peter, James, and John. Look at John 20, verse 2. John 20, verse 2. Then she runneth, we'll start verse 1, the first day of the week, Sunday, cometh Mary Magdalene early, when it was yet dark, unto the sepulchre, and seized the stone taken away from the sepulchre. Then she runneth, and cometh to Simon Peter, and to the other disciple whom Jesus loved, we already knew that's, that's John, and saith unto him, They have taken away the Lord out of the sepulchre, and we know not where they had laid him. Peter therefore went forth and the other disciple and came to the sepulcher. So they ran both together and the other disciple did outrun Peter and came first to the sepulcher. John's the first one. How many people are at the sepulcher now? Mary, Peter, and John. Mary was there first. That was no good. You can't do it on one. You needed three. So John is at the sepulcher when the body of Jesus is gone, resurrected. Look at here. Chapter 19. Verse 25, Now there stood by the cross of Jesus his mother, and his mother's sister Mary, the, the wife of Cleopas, and Mary Magdalene. There's three again. And Jesus therefore saw his mother, and the disciples standing by whom he loved. There is John at the cross of Jesus. 
There is John at the empty tomb. John 20, verse 19. John 20, verse 19. Then the same day at even, being the first day of the week, Sunday, when the doors were shut, where the disciples were assembled for the fear of the Jews, came Jesus. There is John in the upper room, and he's seen the Lord Jesus Christ, the resurrected Savior. He's seen the dying Savior on the cross. He's seen the body of the Savior gone. And now he's seen the resurrected Savior. All by the eyes of John. More information about John. We got far, didn't we? We'll get it even slower, believe me. All right, John. That was John the Apostle. John. The Gospel of John. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Nineteen times is the name John. Nineteen times you can find John in the Gospel of John. But they're all in reference to to John the Baptist and not John Zebedee or John brother of James not once in all three epistles of John John as himself is indicated not once John doesn't really want to make himself known I guess you can't build a, a, a Catholic church or any kind of church upon John and kiss his ring and his big toe because John doesn't want to be known. John's not the kind of person, oh, look at me, look at me, and get his name in the paper and everything. John does what, what the Lord wants him to do, and he does it without blowing his own trumpet. Now, it's funny I'm going to say this next thing because I have been accused of it, but there are people out there who wear buttons and doodads that says, I'm a Christian. And if you're really a Christian, you don't need to advertise. Your life will prove to be Christian by what you do. Now, there's a big testimony being a, having a doodad, I need to say, you know, I'm a Christian rather than Scripture. And a witness. There's two different stories. You can wear a pin that has scripture. You can wear a hat that has something to tell people about heaven or hell. You can have on your car something that tells people how to be saved. You, you can have scripture and all that. But there's nothing like that that says, hey, look at me. John doesn't stand out. Yeah, but look at all the places he's been. Look at all the things he can record. John can have a personal eternity relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ, unlike the other eight disciples, leaving out Judas, in glory. John can pull up a chair with Jesus and talk about things that only him... Peter and James saw and talked about. The book of Revelation three times. Three times. John is mentioned. And he's mentioned, and here's a study, here's the outline. And they don't have the same letter, I'm sorry, you know. Don't want to go with traditions. John wrote this himself. One is as a witness. Number two, as a writer. And number three, as a servant. John was a witness. 
out of the mouth of two or three it shall be established. As a writer, the Gospel of John, 1st, 2nd, 3rd John, and the book of Revelation. And as a servant, he did everything the Lord Jesus Christ told him to do and was guided by the Holy Spirit to do right and not wrong. And we're going to close right there on John. Next week, Lord willing, we're going to get to the paragraph markings and the outline. And we should get into our first study and open up First John. But we're not going to get far. <laughs> I guarantee that. As we look at the epistle of Second John, and we're going to study it verse by verse. Actually, we're going to study it paragraph by paragraph, verse by verse, and we'll study word by word where we need to. And we'll get doctrines, and we'll study everything that we can that the Holy Spirit will guide us to know about. And to get to know our Savior more, and what our conduct should be like as born-again Christians. Thank you very much.